Hello and welcome to Aberon's Armorio. Today we're going to be taking part two of our lessons on marshalling and cadency. We're going to be talking specifically about marshalling today. Um, there is basically three common ways that um, marshalling is done in heraldry. Um, those are impalement, quartering, and subquartering. You also see charges placed in Eschutian, but that's a whole extra topic for today. So if you've seen a coat of arms, or you've seen heraldry in medieval movies or other things, you have probably seen quarterings. Quarterings are when the shield is divided into quarters, four quarters. Um, normally it will be two of the same and two of the same, or it will be one of the, you know, two of the same and three, or one, two, three. So think the royal arms, for example, the lions of England go in the first and last quarters, and the other two quarters are occupied by two different shields. Um, so in our case, that would be the Lions of England go in the first and fourth, and the Scottish Lion goes in the second, the Irish Harp goes in the third. Now, in quarterings, as far as a shine of cadency and that sort of thing, can only be done as a mark of more than one coat of arms being merged together, because that's really what it is. The marshalling of arms means the, the putting together of arms. So, for example, first example we'll talk about is impalement. Impalement is when two shields are put together. You will see just a plain shield, it'll be divided into two, and the full shield of one and the full shield of another will be placed together. Now, this is normally done when an armager, a male armager, marries a woman who is either an armager in her own right, or she is a heraldic heiress, meaning her father is an armager. Now, this has traditionally been more, the latter has been more the case throughout history, as until the past 50 to 100 years, closer to 50, um, women have never really had arms in their own right, at least in the British system of heraldry. Um, you really see it mostly nowadays with females who are put on the New Year's Honors list and apply for arms, or women that are admitted to the House of Lords and thus apply for arms. For example, Margaret Thatcher, when she was made Baroness Thatcher, stopped using her husband's arms and ended up using arms in her own right. Um, so for the traditional side of things, it works the same way. Which is both really nice. So for example, I use cord rings. I show my father's arms and my maternal grandfather's arms. So my mother does not have arms, however my maternal grandfather does. So I, since I inherit both, I can put those together. Now there's a little bit of extra thing there about it passing down the generations, and we'll get to that when we talk about actual quarters. But as far as impalement goes, historically it used to be that they would be done by diminution, I think is what the term is called where if you were looking at a shield, you would simply slice the shield in half and slice the other shield in half and put it together. And that's how you get some interesting compound arms because it's not displaying the full arms on either. It's only showing half of the respective shield. And that fall out of practice mm, past few hundred years, I'd say. And now we pretty much only see full impalement. So it is a full shield and a full shield. Impalement is also special because it can be done in other circumstances. Say, if you are one of the kings of arms, if you're Lord Lion, for example, the arms of the office are impaled with the personal arms, for example. Um, bishops are allowed to impale the diocesan arms or the diocesan cathedral's arms with their personal arms and use that as their own ecclesiastical arms. So with impalement, it's a husband and a wife coming together. It's their two arms or the husband's and the maternal or the uh, father-in-law's arms placed together. Now, their child, if they have a son, bears those two arms not as impaled arms with a label of three points, as you might think. They bear them as quarters. So, like, for example, my parents could place their arms together and have the acorns, the, the rose on one side and the hounds on the other, and that could be their arms together. Then... I would now not use that with a label, I would use that quartered. So the paternal arms go on two quarters, the maternal go on the other. Now with impalement, the male line always goes on the left hand or the dexter side. So dexter, sinister. So dexter side is always the male line. 
Now it's interesting though, because when they impale the arms, they can also impale the names. So the example sheet that I'll post in the description has Mr. Barr, who is an armager, meets Mrs. Cross, also an armager in her own right. They decide to get married and they become Mr. and Mrs. Cross Barr. Now, when the arms are impaled, Barr's would go first because he's the male, then the female. So it'll be Dexter and Sinister. So it'll be Barr and it will be Cross. But the names are reversed because the, the paternal name, the male surname will carry on. Or if it's hyphenated, that one will be the last because it's the most important. So if I wanted to, the name could always be Roberts MacDonald, though I just use MacDonald for our last name. Now, it, will, it shows that, and then it moves on to, and they have a son. That son then impales their arms being, or they marshal their arms using quarterings, sorry. So the male arms go Dexter, Chief, Sinister Base, and the exact opposite is used for the maternal side. Now... Here's where we get into things. If that person has a son, so if I have a son, I use the quartered arms for that son also uses the quartered arms. So my arms can have a label of three points put around it. Or if I had more than one, I could put a border or another mark of cadency around it. And those arms now pass, assuming I don't marry an armager. If I marry an armager then, and I already have quarterings, then my shield being the quarterings is then marshaled with the next. And it shows that in the description. So that son of crossbar Mary's Rose, I think is what it says. I can't read it from here. I have bad eyes. So now the quartering shield and the other one get marshaled together. Or there's another alternative, and that would be placing the two shields on top of each other. So his maternal, his paternal and his maternal shield are placed on top and then marshaled against the fem his wife's shield. Or you can do what's called subquartering. So subquartering is done when there is a quarter in a quarter. So my child, for example, if I had a grandchild through an armiduous line, what they could do is my quarterings are used as quarterings themselves, and then the other shield is used in the opposite. So that's basically the short example of marshalling. I'm sorry I cannot display them on the screen, but like I said, they are found down below. If you have any questions whatsoever or need any clarification, please consult the document that I posted that just has some example sheets. If you need more, there's a great chapter in Fox Davies' Complete Guide to Heraldry, one of the books I recommended in my last video, or in a few videos back, but talks really well about marks of cadency, bastardry, and marshalling. So I would leave you there. Um, please remember to like and subscribe, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Thank you.